been the momentous and challenging week for the nation. And as we celebrate an incredible monarch, we now have the chance to celebrate the start of the Elite League season. The Guildford Flames are the visitors to the Motor Points Arena this evening. They were the last visitors in the competitive game here in the playoff quarterfinals in April. That didn't end so well for the Panthers, but a lot of change for the club. And this season begins with much more optimism. Carlock will get there for Guildford and gets it out. It's put into the corner, so Panthers should have possession again, but they're deep in their own zone. LeBron gets it to Hazeldine. Hazeldine getting an early shift. Recovers well. LeGron again just kicks it to the side. Jeremy Welsh will take it up. It's really good to see Hazeldine, you just mentioned they're out for his first shift, you know, just kind of getting his feet wet, get, getting him out onto the ice straight away. Oh, and there's a break for Guildford, and they've gone round and they've scored. Guildford with an early lead, and Sam Markland puts it in the net. Yeah, and uh, I think one of the guys we talked about maybe off air early with three goals in, in two exhibition games, uh, danger guy there. You see a Legrand chasing down. I think that's Puffer as well, but great move here, power move. The number 20 looks like he's going to shoot on his backhand, takes it to his forehand, walks around Dubo. Nothing Alex Dubo can do there, you know, one on one this early in the game. But nice power move there by the forward, and he just slides that one in on the forehand. Bring it away through Summers. Summers going through the middle. He goes with a great pass to Hammond. Hammond back to Summers. Bit of space now. Now is the opportunity. Oh, it's just wide. McAdam didn't get hold of all of it. Still there as Brady gets it back out and almost passed into the net by Hammond. Willishka will pick it up. The crowd start to raise the noise. Brassard flicks it in. Willishka turns away. Now Brady. Hammond using all the stick skills again, but Guildford bring it away and they might have a three on two here. There's space in the middle as I think Debo got something on that. Here's O'Connor. Intelligent play by O'Connor to fire it in off the boards right in front, but Debo freezes it on the back of the net and chances at both ends there. Yeah, end to end there. First off, great play. You know, Hammond around the net there for the Panthers. He's the creator. You see there, great dish across and then, oh, Hazeldine, what, you know, what a great poise play there. Myers just didn't really have a lane to the net. Again, he goes back just wide of the net. See that chance just in the slot. And I, I, I don't know how that didn't sit down for Brady. He had a couple of whacks at it. Well, she's going to race on to this one. Turns away. Looking to get it back to Summers. Well, still has it. Turns away again. All right, out in front. Oh, great save, McAdam. Brassard cratching the net. Best chance of the game for the Panthers. Here's Summers again. Chips it in. This is better from the Panthers right out in front, and it's there! It's in! They do get the goal, and Tanner Sorensen gets his first goal in Panthers colours. Yeah, and just second to the four, a huge save there. And, you know, you thought the Flames had maybe escaped with that big save, but a little bit of a mix-up behind the net. You see here, trying to go D to D, and then Puffer, great play here. Could go for the, for the wraparound, but you see he's got his head up. And he just slides that across there for Sorensen, and he's not going to miss that one. And I thought at the start, maybe he'd hit the crossbar the way it jumped straight back out, but he knows, you can see there. Myers needs a face off, it stays in the zone. Kelsall turns away. Hopkins, Hopkins taking the shot, but was closed down really well. Hazeldine gets back, oh, he's beaten to it, and now here's the opportunity. Great save to Bo. Tedesco was bearing down. I didn't see if um, Dubo made the big pad save or maybe the puck just kind of jumped at the last minute, but we'll just see here, he gets in again. Nice move, goes to his forehand. Oh no, yeah, he definitely gets the stick in there. Dubo does a great job. Rippling up. Looking for the inside pass. It comes right back out oh. in front and it misses everybody. And now Panthers come the other way. Here's Brady. Oh, and now a chance for the Flames to break two on one. Ericsson is taken away from him though, poked away. Brady picks it up. 
Goes for Hammond. Got Willishka with him. He drops back for Brady. Oh. And it's in! <coughs> Adam Brady finds the corner. And Brady opens his account for the 22-23 season. Let's have a look at this again. Great drop pass by Hammond. And Brady... Oh, it gets a big deflection off the stick, doesn't it? I yeah. think it maybe have gone in off Willishka. Yeah, either him or the defenseman, maybe, because you see the first deflection off the off the D-man stick, and then it kind of shoots across and then in, so... It's, it's probably too fast here, full speed, but you see here, one deflection. Yeah, I think it might be Willishka. I think it's Willishka. I think it goes in off his skate. Yeah. Here's Johnston. Johnston still. Comes back to point for Gagnon. It runs off his stick now and goes into neutralise. Gagnon still has it. Gagnon again. Welsh puts it into the zone, but McAdam fields it for the Flames. That's good pinching in by Gagnon, though, to take the puck. Comes back out in front. It's bobbling around, but the Flames bring it away, and now they may have a three on two. Tate into the zone. Tate gets oh. a bit of space. Oh, oh, what a finish! What a superb goal! Ryan Tate. 18 goals last year in France, and you see there, he has the guy go into the net. You see him taking Craig Moore out of the play, and he just cuts in, obviously, Dubot. Nothing he can do there, coming right through the middle. And I remember at the start, the start of the first, Tate, great speed. He was taking the body. Great kind of role player here, but you see him just pick this up, head down, pushing that defense, uh, the Panthers' defense back, and you see his line mate here. Just he does a great job going to the net, and it just opens it up for Ryan Tate. Yeah, and it was kind of it's been a bit of a theme, I would say, this game so far, where you know one team has two or three minutes camped in the zone, chance after chance, and then you know then the Panthers would have one. Now the Flames have just had their one, and it's kind of gone back and forth in that way, but. You know, Panthers definitely, I would still say, have been on top for, for more of the game, but... Shot from Legrand, and it's loose, and couldn't quite get onto it. Puffer. And now Flames come away. It's three on one. Real opportunity. Oh, what a save to Bo! Incredible save. And there it is. Yeah, I was just about to say the save of the game, and there it is, Alex Dubo. We, we've talked about his... His speed moving, you know, laterally, and huge save there. Great, great play. Flames get a three on one. I almost thought he was going to try and look for this number five here, but he gets that across, and, you know, he's got to try and get that up to beat him, but Dubo flashes the cross there, kicks out the pad, and huge save by him. Tedesco gets it forward, looking for Crinella. Crinella turns away from Brady. Crinella just gets it back. Tedesco again. He just hands it off. Oh, it's Crinella. This is great play by the Flames. It's fired in. Oh, what a shot and what a goal. And the Flames take the lead again. G great play again. Just great movement in the zone. And, and I think there, Crinella there does get the deflection in front. You see it come back to the point here. And there's a lot of traffic. Doesn't waste the shot, gets it through. I'm just trying to see, I think it looks there, you just see a little little deflection from Cronella. You can kind of tell from his reaction, and you know, again, we talked about a simple play, the Flames cycle and cycle, get it to the point, get it through, and there's Cronella with the redirection, gets a piece of it, and up into the top of the net. And after, you know, Dubot, great save a few minutes ago. And then this one does beat him there. It's picked up by Crocop, Crocop. Fired in, Dubot, oh, it's... Has to make two, a double save. Panthers away again. We're into the final two minutes of this third period. And Debo heads to the bench. Six on five. Empty net. Goes back for Brassard. Brassard across to Summers. Summers buys it in. And it's tipped wide by Johnson. And now the Flames have it. He finds Brassard. Brassard takes a safety first option and goes for Summers. Johnston into the corner. Now Welsh. Meyer's in there as well. Anderson gets it back to point. Comes oh. back in. Oh, it's loose right in hey. front. And it's there. The empty net works. Panthers get the equaliser. 
It's 3-3. And it, it takes a crazy bounce. Look, this is going like nowhere near the net. And all of a sudden, it just hops there. And you see it just fall. And Johnson, we see Johnson in pre-season do that a couple of times. It falls right on his stick and into the net. Andrew Johnson gets the equaliser. A very similar goal to the one he scored last week against Cardiff in yeah, pre-season. Exactly, yeah. In exactly the same situation. Yeah, the but, but you see there, like, that's not going towards the net to start with. And then just takes a bad bounce. And But again, you know, Panthers with the goalie out, like, we, we've seen it a couple of times in pre-season. And again there. But eventually, the Flames do shovel it out into the final 10 seconds of the game. Legrand shoveled over and out it comes and we are going to go to overtime so 3-3 at the end of three periods and the game will be decided by three on three overtime and if it's still level we go to the lottery of penalty shots I think I think Mike Hammond's uh, Mike Hammond's my, my one to watch here in overtime with that extra ice yep. the space the skill maybe not scoring but I just think he'll be very dominant. Also, Dougie Legrand, obviously a defenseman, but skates so well, he's almost like having another forward out there. So, yeah, I, I will, uh, I'll keep my eye on, uh, on my Cameron for sure. So it's Flames who have the puck as we start the overtime period. Looking for tape, but it's with Hammond. Hammond will go across to Legrand. Willichka goes forward. Legrand goes back for Hammond. Here's Walishka, and he's right in front. Here's Hammond. Hammond wins it for Nottingham. Mike Hammond, the man who can do it, and he's done it. Panthers win 4-3 in overtime. And I don't know what happened with the Flames there. They just had like they just they were wide open. The Panthers here, and Walishka slides this across. I thought Hammond was going to get this and go back door, but he just holds on and fires. But it was I don't know if we'll get to see it, but it, it looked as if one of the Flames guys just changed. And it was like a three on one right in front of the net here. You just see a gaping. And Mike Hammond jumps on that one. And we spoke about him 20 seconds ago. And you know, it kind of turned from a uh, almost like a poor start for the Panthers into the perfect comeback win. And uh, JC Brassard who picks up the award from the sponsors. So Panthers will go and take their well-deserved applause from the fans in attendance. Worked hard for it. Yeah, de definitely didn't come easy, but it, that's sometimes good, you know. Battle out, gut out a win. So Prasad leads the celebrations. The delighted crowd cheer along with him and the Panthers will leave the ice. And the Panthers fans in attendance will leave the arena very, very happy. On Panthers TV with Jeremiah's Chimney Sisters, joined by head coach Gary Graham. Gary, I know you're not fully thrilled with the performance, but you couldn't have scripted a better league home opener. No, I think the fans definitely got some entertainment tonight. You know, we're still looking to improve in certain areas. I mean, I talked to the refs after the game, and no power plays for either team. It's, it's actually unheard of. I mean, both ref referees have never seen that before. Um, it just goes to show you that both teams were extremely on their game, disciplined, checking with their legs, not reaching, hooking, holding. You know, there were some good hits during the game, so it was an entertaining game, but we just got to eliminate the mistakes that are really costing us. I mean, again, the first goal, we basically hand them like trick-or-treat candy for free, and, you know, we've been doing that a couple times and you know we just got to make it harder on other teams to score how can you eliminate those mistakes is it just keep reminding guys about their responsibilities well it's a, you know you, you walk a fine line because you don't want guys squeezing their sticks you want to give them the freedom to be creative and, and, and manage the puck in their own creative ways but you know you got to have some rules and some guidelines you know and that's typically you know how many numbers you have on the rush you know if you're in a good number situation you got good gaps to the neutral zone you could be more creative but you know if they're up in your face and, and it's a little bit tighter the windows are tighter you want to dump the puck in and get on the four check and you know same thing when our on, on the walls you know i think tomorrow going into coventry they play kind of similar to Guildford, they're very aggressive on the walls and how we handle that's going to be important tomorrow. 
How much credit do you give the guys for sticking in? And, you know, they scored with just over a minute remaining and then got that jump for the, for the overtime. How much credit can you give the guys for what they did there? Well, you give the guys all the credit. I mean, I sure as heck don't deserve any of it. I wasn't on the ice. I mean, it's all the guys. I mean, that's what, that's what they're paid to do a job, and they went out there and, and they were more resilient than them, and they got the job done. But, you know, tip your hat to Guilford. They came in, they were prepared. Obviously, Paul's a heck of a coach, and um, they had a good game plan against us, and, you know, ultimately we got the extra point. I think you talked about this pre-game about their speed, that that was very evident early on, wasn't it? Yeah, well, you got to let the puck do the work. I mean, if you try to, you know, dipsy doodle and hang on to the puck, you know, they're their gophers on the forecheck are going to get you and they're going to cause some turnovers. And that's what happened at the beginning of the third period. We got away from our game plan. We started trying to be a little cute on our breakouts and, and they really you know, caused a lot of chaos in our own end. And that's uh, where they got some momentum. And then we got back to our game, moving the puck quick and we're a little bit better in transition when we move it quicker. I know we talked about this before, but the support, again, it was another big crowd. How much did that help to kind of roar you on in the closing stages? Uh, it helps tremendously. Yeah, I mean, and obviously when you can win an exciting game and reward your your fans. I mean, again, the fans are they're the ones who pay our, pay our bills. I mean, and the guys know it, I know it, and uh, without their support, we'd be nothing. So, um, you know, it's always good when you can give them an exciting first home game. And just finally, Coventry again tomorrow. You've already seen them on the road. What sort of game are you expecting? A good game. You know, Danny's a heck of a coach, and, and he'll have his team ready. You know, I think last game we got in a lot of penalty trouble. We had about 12 minutes on the penalty kill last time, and, uh, you know, they got they had 18 shots on goal on assists from their power play. So, you know, they got a good power play. They got some, some good half-wall guys that can hurt you. So, you know, uh, we got to be disciplined tomorrow, going in there on the road and make sure we take care of the puck. With J.C. Brassard of the Panthers after that 4-3 overtime win, what a way to win it. Yeah, it was definitely an entertaining one. I mean, the boys played well, I think, a couple breakdowns, but it's great to get a first win on the first game on home ice in front of a great fan section. It was a real back and forth game. It was like the Flames seemed to have a lot of pressure, Panthers had a lot of pressure, then back and forth, back and forth. It was a really strange game in that way. Yeah, I mean, they're a very offensive team, and so we tried to play a similar style, I guess. We're very offensive as well, and uh, it just worked out for us a little bit better, but they're very dangerous on the rush, and we just did a, a good job of holding only three goals and taking advantage when it counted. Another empty net goal, almost a carbon copy of the one last week. It's not a play you want to use too often, but it's a play that seems to be working well for you. Well, it's definitely good to know that it's a pretty reliable play because when you get down like that and you need a goal, it's good to have you know a set of guys you can rely on to you know put the puck in the net and even up the game and get ready for overtime. Of course, a late goal and then you go into overtime. So that really gave you some mental some momentum going into that overtime period. Yeah, definitely. It definitely uh, it's a lot better to get the goal than to be the one getting scored on and then having to go into overtime almost deflated. So I think, you know, it gave us a boost and it deflated them a little bit and then we took advantage when it counted. How much momentum does that give you going into tomorrow's game against Coventry? Oh, it's always a lot of momentum winning the night before, especially on home ice. It, you know, gets the boys feeling good and gets us excited to play the next day. And, of course, a rink you've already won in in preseason. Does that give you a lot of confidence going in there in, in, in the league game? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a different rink than we play at here and a uh, little different size ice and, you know, uh, shorter glass. So it definitely takes a little bit to get adjusted to, especially in the first couple shifts early in the season and with a new team that hasn't played there very often. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely good for momentum for us and uh, I think we should do well tomorrow.